With news that her 55-year-old husband was struck and killed by a motor vehicle at Diamond Village in the wee hours of this morning, 56-year-old Bethel Gonzalez is now calling for justice for her deceased husband. The mother of six said she had been informed by a family friend that her husband of 35 years was no longer alive. With his banana-stained work garments still on, still on the clothesline drying in the sun, Bethel said her companion will be missed daily. Still shaken by the news of the death of her spouse, Bethel Gonzalez mustered the courage to speak with SVG TV and said that her husband's death has left her heartbroken. Bad news. So I say, what kind of bad news? What kind of bad news? She's... So I opened the door and he come to the door. He, he said, let me sit down. I sit down. I take a seat and he say, they kill Larby. Because that's what people know him you know, everybody know him by that name. We said, we said what? We said, they kill Abby. They knock him down and kill him. The now widowed housewife remembers her husband as a caring and hardworking man who tilled the land and tended his livestock so as to provide for his family. Because he did not deserve to die that way. He was a good man. <laughs> to his family and people must realize that people have family. Whosoever did it, they should realize that he have a family to take care of. So, after I heard it, I just started crying. And I went from my sister in. And the time I knocked on the door, she was right in front of the door because she already heard. She cheered me up. Meanwhile, son-in-law of the deceased, Oswald Williams, remembers Gonzales as a hard-working farmer who, and butcher who tried to instill admirable values in his children. He highlighted that he was blessed enough to marry one of Gonzales' lovely daughters and recalls his wife fondly reminiscing of the love of her father outpouring for family, uh, that should be the love of her father outpouring for family members. Williams confessed that the family is still grieving and believes that the incident will bring them closer together. When I first met him, I knew him to my wife because it's my wife's father. And he was always a hardworking man, farming. His clothes always working as a farm with, you know, the stains and the banana stains on his shirts. And I, 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 to me, I admire him for that because he gave my, my wife values, hard-working values. And she, it, she, she speak of it. When the tragedy happened, you know, it, it shook us so much to know that they took her father, who she loved so dearly, and who gave her example as how to be a responsible person. And I thank God for that. And I, I, I remember him as a hard-working man that loved his family dearly. Technical assistance will be given to this country from Taiwan on the Black Sig con that should be Black Sigatoka control. That is according to Minister of Agriculture Suboto Caesar, who also highlighted that a delegation from the Republic of China will be welcomed to SVG on Monday, January 12th. According to Caesar, discussions were held prior to, with the Taiwanese, the Taiwanese ambassador Bao Shuangge, who indicated that Taiwan will be able to offer their expertise on the issue of Black Sig of the Black Sigatoka disease. The minister took the opportunity in his speech to thank the Taiwanese who continually give assistance to the development of, of the agriculture sector in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. According to the reports from the Ministry of Agriculture, the Taiwanese delegation will work along with members of the Banana Service Unit and the, the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit. The government is said to be now spending far more money on pharmaceuticals than any other time in SVG's history. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez indicated that a study which was completed in 2012 shows that over 95% of the prescriptions were filled at the hospital, while less than 70% of prescriptions were filled in 2000. The same people did the study in 2000 and came back and did the study in 2012-2013. So those are the facts. You see, there are some people, if they go to the hospital and they have five medicine to get five set of tablets and they get four and they don't get one they will talk about the one they didn't get and remember that this was five dollars you know 
Even though the tablets them cost a hundred and fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or what? It's five dollars, you know. That's the price. He noted that they have also installed a health information system which would cut out any wastage of pharmaceutical products. I want to say this. Go to all the clinics and you will see an air conditioned room in which we have pharmaceutical products. Let's take somewhere far from Tonga, Kalakwa, or Kittels. Let us take Oya. Go up there and you will see that. There's a, there's a, there's a room. I, I was there. I went there. I saw it to the pharmacist. I visited it. <laughs> Air condition. President of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Human Rights Association, Nicole Sylvester, is pleased that the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force will be taking tougher measures to curtail the number of illegal guns in this country. Sylvester said that the association was established to also be a mediator and an advocate for peace. We heard that the police are looking at the high incidence of uh, guns in the country. Um, I thought that that was something that was so for quite a while now, but we are happy to see that it is high on the agenda of the police and we certainly support them taking steps to curb the high incidence of crime which is gun related. There are many matters that do not see the light of day that we have managed to resolve amicably with parties so they would not even be addressed in the court of law. So that this is a continuation of that aspect of, of, of human rights. Human rights isn't just about demonstrations and this isn't just about raising issues of abuse or raising issues on behalf of victims. Human rights is also to try to bring healing in situations where it's necessary. The barrister said that the prayer and healing rally that which takes place from 6 p.m. at Clear Valley this Sunday will also allow Vincentians an opportunity to pray not only for the country but for relief from the issues that presently plague the society. We're basically just to invite in particular the residents of South Leeward community to come out because you are the ones who will be most affected by it. We certainly know that there were other persons from other areas who were in attendance, so it's not exclusive. So I do not want the message to come out that it is. It's for all Vincentians, so that on, on Sunday the 11th, this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. at the Clare Valley Hard Court, we would like as many persons to come and be there in solidarity and in support of, of, of the prayer and healing rally.